If you can muster it up doing 12% less of this one thing, you may very well put yourself on the biological path for longevity. And now, we're not talking about exercise or scrolling the talk of tick for hours on end, although that probably has a pretty good payoff too. Unfortunately, we're talking about everyone's favorite hobby, eating. Yeah, but there happens to be a scenario where you may be able to get the best of all worlds. Let's go. Yo, 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 what is up? Welcome back to another week of How to Health. My name is Kevin. I run liftandbalance.com where we take aim at all things health and longevity and do it in an odd, weird, interesting, and highly sarcastic way. Today, we are exploring how one of the biggest longevity downsides associated with eating just a little bit less may not be as detrimental as once thought especially when we take into account the supporting research on the topic. We are discussing chronic calorie restrictions effects on the oh so important muscle and strain. The tissue that along with bone makes up the majority of our structural self. Something that we absolutely need in order to be thriving and capable into our golden years of life. And as we teased in the intro, how there may actually be a world where we reap the longevity benefits benefits of a calorie restriction while keeping our structural self in a good solid place. I say this because, as you can imagine, one of the byproducts of chronically eating less is a typical decrease in body mass. And despite popular belief, the mass doesn't just default to everybody's arch nemesis adipose tissue, aka fat. Muscle, bone, and organ tissue often give up their fair share too, especially if the circumstances allow it, which we'll talk about in just a bit. But before we get there, we gotta address the cellular hype that comes with eating just a little bit less. And we'll do this by reviewing what we know from the data published to date, then dive into some new hot off the scientific streets human research, looking into the eating protocol's longevity effects and impact on the aforementioned muscle and strength, which brings with it a few surprising twists, might I add. And finally, we'll attempt to answer if eating less is actually a requirement for achieving this cellular longevity boost, and why I personally take a different approach. So let's begin at the only place that makes sense. What is the big whoop, all the hype, all the energy, or lack thereof? around a chronic calorie restriction. And to answer this, it's important to know right off the bat that when it comes to research on countering the effects of aging, increasing health span, and extending longevity, calorie restriction happens to be the most studied non-genetic intervention. Now, to be super clear, the majority of this research has been done in model organisms, ranging from yeast to non-human primates. However, to date, a large proportion of this data has suggested that caloric restriction has a health span and lifespan boosting effect, meaning improving both quality of life and length of life, aka that longevity thing. We're talking glucose stabilizing, insulin balancing, sirtuin longevity gene activating, autophagy stimulating, mitochondria enhancing, inflammation reducing, metabolic boosting effects. Ultimately doing two things at the cellular and metabolic level, making the organism's biological machinery operate more efficiently and minimizing the natural metabolic damage. For example, when it comes to the critical energy producing organelles which reside in each and every one of our cells by the hundreds, our mitochondria, calorie restriction has been shown to improve electron transport chain efficiency while reducing protein leak and reactive oxygen species production, making it a straight up win-win, if it can be sustained. Now. As I mentioned before, one of the byproducts of chronically eating less is a reduction in overall body mass, which most people who put all their time and attention to those numbers on the scale would consider a good thing. However, if that body mass is more skeletal muscle and bone rather than excess fat, this can turn into a longevity nightmare. 
as one of the biggest longevity liabilities that we modern humans face. Something that we've spoken about a lot on this channel and dive into in this video here is becoming weak, feeble, immobile, and incapable of physically supporting ourselves. However, as we saw in recent research on this specific topic reviewed here, more muscle may not necessarily mean more longevity. Instead, it may be strength, which is the critical component, or our neurological ability to recruit muscle fibers to carry out a desired action. And this story becomes even more interesting when we add this new human caloric restriction study into the mix. Researchers comprise the calorie or comprehensive assessment of long-term effects of reducing intake of energy study to investigate the effects of long-term calorie restriction on human muscle and essentially see if the juice was worth the longevity squeeze. Also knowing that you do, in fact, need muscle to actually squeeze anything. Or do you? The study enrolled 218 healthy adults average age of 40 and randomized them to either a 12% calorie restriction diet or an ad libitum eat whenever you want, do whatever you want control group for two years. During this time, they measured different biomarkers and collected tissue samples, specifically at baseline 12 months and 24 months to analyze the changes. This included genetic expression, muscle biopsy, DEXA scans, and blood panels, while also doing more frequent overall body composition reviews. Now, I want to take a moment to highlight the significance of all this because it really is a trailblazing effort. First, there are not many long-term calorie restriction studies in humans because they're flat out hard to do. Of them, most of them are not randomized controlled. And of those, basically none of them take a deep dive into the specific downside effects as well as the longevity ones. In this case, muscle and strength loss. So this is pretty awesome to review. At least, if you're a longevity geek like me. With that, what happened? As you can imagine, some interesting things. First, by the end of the two years, the CR group had lost an average of 10% of their body weight, while the ad libitum group had gained an average of 1%. This happens to be the least cool result. After the comprehensive biological analysis, the researchers found that calorie restriction had significantly changed the expression of hundreds of genes, including genes related to protein synthesis, circadian rhythm regulation, DNA repair, mitochondria biogenesis, mRNA processing, metabolism, apoptosis, and inflammation in most cases, shifting their expression in a health-promoting direction. And shockingly, after the two years of eating at an average 12% caloric restriction, the healthy participants only saw minor losses in overall muscle mass, with no changes in strength. This would be a good time to remember that muscle strength longevity dynamic we mentioned before. Pretty damn interesting, right? Researchers hypothesized that this was driven by beneficial changes in the aforementioned biological pathways, mediating a positive effect from caloric restriction on muscle quality and strength, ultimately suggesting that attainable levels of a caloric restriction in a lifestyle intervention can benefit muscle health in humans. Now, it's important to call out that participants were encouraged to exercise 30 minutes a day. However, this was not tracked scientifically, only by self-reporting. So the extent of exercise's impact on preserving muscle during the caloric restriction is unknown. However, I would hypothesize that it probably played a role, making this factor a definite limitation of the study, along with it being relatively small and reliant on participants to manage their caloric restriction on their own. In fact, the 12% caloric restriction was just what participants were able to maintain, as the original goal of the study was a 25% restriction, which is crazy tough, but potentially not as tough as this next question. Should we actually try to chronically eat less? And I'll tell you the only honest answer. It depends. 
because it's an impossible question to answer without knowing the unique lifestyle variables and environmental factors of the individual asking it. Yes, it's true that most of us consume more energy than we need on a daily basis. And that's one of the underlying reasons we've become a society riddled with more chronic disease and dysfunction than any before it. However, eating at a calorie restriction for a long period of time is hard, really hard. Just ask anyone who's tried a lose 20 pounds in six weeks diet. So if it's not done in a structured, sustainable way, it could be close to impossible to achieve the desired longevity benefits. On top of that, diet is only one of the foundational components of health and longevity. And as we've seen across the hundreds of research reviews we've done on this channel, if you disregard the type of food you're eating, sleep you're getting, movement you're doing, nature you're interacting with, as well as the emotional and psychological components of the equation, the biochemical forces playing against your caloric restriction goals would be so great, it'd be a miracle to sustain. Thus why I, personally, opt to take a different approach. Not eat less, but instead in a strategic, consistent window. As daily time-restricted feeding has been shown to drive many of the same biological benefits as calorie restriction and do it without all the extra math homework. An easy way to structure your window is by focusing on consuming all of your energy within a 10 hour feeding window or less positioned during the daylight hours. Then fasting 14 plus hours overnight. And if you're interested, you can find all the details on what I personally do and why I do it in this video here. If you mix a strategy like this with eating real whole nourishing foods, prioritizing high quality circadian aligned sleep, Daily Badonka Donking, aka exercise, which will also help you maintain your muscle and strength. Spending time outside and deploying good stress management practices, you have all the ingredients for the secret sauce of vitality, likely without ever needing a calorie restriction. Is it easy? Probably not, especially if you try to do it all at once. But feeling like shit each and every day ain't easy either. In fact, it's exhausting. Remember, you've got all the biological machinery you need to feel good every single damn day. It's been developed and optimized over millions of years of evolution. It's up to you whether you put said machinery in a position to operate efficiently and finally feel how you're capable of feeling. Effing awesome on a consistent basis. All I can leave you with is the juice is in fact worth the squeeze. As long as you keep the strength to do it, that is.